Good afternoon and welcome to this Uni Taste Tuesday. My name is John, I'm here from Uni Taste Days and I'll be hosting this event today where we're going to provide an introduction to university courses in geology. I'm really pleased to be joined by Tegan Yates. Tegan is a student recruitment assistant at Edgehill University and Tegan is going to provide an introduction to geology courses. I'm always conscious of these events that you're not uh, tuning in to hear from me, you're tuning in to hear from our excellent speakers. So I'll pass things straight over to Tegan for a geology introduction. Over to you Tegan. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this introduction to geology from me, Tegan, and I am in Edgehill University today. Um, I do apologise if you can't hear my chair squeaking throughout this, I'm sat in a little cupboard. Um, so hopefully this is really useful for you. Just to introduce myself a little bit, so my name is Tegan, and as John said, I do work as a student recruitment assistant, but before that I studied my A-levels at my school sixth form, um, and I studied biology, psychology and photography. Um, and that was 2014 to 2016. I then went on to study biology at Edge Hill University, 2016 to 2019. And I have worked as a student recruitment assistant for the last year for the biosciences and the geography and geology departments. And um, so that's why I'm giving you an introduction to geology today. The first thing I kind of want to tell you about is why you should study geology. So you'll gain an in-depth understanding of a wide range of disciplines, which I will touch on a little bit later in the session. You'll get trained to use various pieces of equipment in the lab and in the field. You'll get to enhance your skills. So you might already be thinking, oh, I've got an excellent skill set, but you'll get to build on them. You'll get to practice them and you'll also get to gain new skills as well. You'll get hands on experience that will enable you to apply for professional level jobs straight after you graduate. You'll experience a range of teaching methods and assessments, and I'll go through a couple of those a little bit later in the session as well. And finally, because you enjoy it. So the most important thing that I could tell anyone, the biggest piece of advice, having been a student myself not too long ago, is always study something that you love because it makes it so much more interesting and just so much more fun. And I always feel like it's just not a chore really to do your work if you're enjoying what you're studying. Um, so that would be my biggest takeaway from today. So just a few application tips. Now, these can kind of be applied to any course that you want to apply for. So if you're watching this thinking you want to study geology, but actually you go on to study something else or apply for something else, then you can still take these tips into consideration. So you should always show your motivation for whatever course you're applying for by telling the admissions tutors why you want to study that course at that specific university. You'll need to talk about your academic ability so what specific topics have you enjoyed or what are you looking forward to? So you can have a look here at the university websites and see what modules are going to be available to you and put some of those in your personal statement and say kind of why you're thinking that you're looking forward to studying them. You can mention your skills and attributes. So always explain why they might help you study the degree that you're interested in and applying for. Make use of any work experience or extra reading that you've done. So work experience doesn't necessarily have to be subject specific. It could be a part time job. If you work in a supermarket or a takeaway or anything like that, you can always apply those skills to what you might want to study. And again, extra reading. So even if you've decided to do that off your own back in the last few months or whether it's been set by your school or college, um, you can always put that in your personal statement as well, because that looks great. And finally, if you've got any hobbies or interests that would enable you to stand out, always mention those as well. So moving on to those geology disciplines that I mentioned at the beginning. So essentially, geology studies the Earth's composition, structure, morphology, dynamics and age. But there are lots and lots of different disciplines within that. So hopefully you can see some of those on the screen at the moment. I won't go through and read all of these to you because I'm very aware that you're probably very capable of doing that for yourself. Uh, but we do have different types of geology as well. So a couple of examples, we've got structural geology that deals with rock disposition and internal structure. Um, so it's very similar to tectonics, but the latter discusses that it's in its regional sense and structural geology is at a smaller scale. And applied geology, so that studies the application of geology knowledge to different human activities, especially to the development of agriculture, resources and geotechnics. So if you're looking at applying for a geology course and you go on to UCAS and you pop in 2021 entry, you'll find that there's 274 different geology courses and that's from 43 different providers. 
So if you're thinking of joining university in 2021, that's your options at the moment. Whereas if you're thinking of studying in 2022 or 2023 or later than that, you might have many more courses from different providers to choose from. The courses that we offer at Edge Hill are Bachelor of Science with Honours in Geology with Geography, and that is split 75% Geology and 25% Geography. We've got a Bachelor of Science with Honours in Geography and Geology, and that's split 50-50, so you'll spend half your time studying Geography and half your time studying Geology. And finally, we've got our Bachelor of Science with Honours in Geo-Environmental Hazards. Now, you might be thinking, why is that on there? That's not a geology course. Now, actually, a lot of the modules do cross over with the geology courses that we run. So it's kind of very geology based, even though it doesn't have geology in the name. And what to expect from a geology degree? So some example modules are on your screen at the moment. So hopefully you can see them. And again, I'm not going to read all of those out to you because I'm, I'm very aware that you can read them. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of um, an insight into the modules that we offer. Now, every single university, every single geology course that they offer will be different. So I would highly recommend having a look at the module breakdown of each of the courses, uh, just because it gives you a little bit more information than just the title of geology. So you can kind of see from what's on the screen there um, some of the stuff that you'll be studying. Now, on them three courses... But I just mentioned that I tell you won't study all of these modules and um, you will study a different combination on, on each of the courses. So feel free to have a look at our website if you want to know the breakdown um, of each course. So moving on to assessment methods. Now, I mentioned this at the beginning and um, it's why to study geology. Um, so when you undertake all these different assessment methods, that helps you build up all of the different skills that you'll be able to take on to your career, whatever you decide that might be. So just a couple of examples of the assessment methods that we run at Edge Hill. So we've got laboratory reports, practical portfolios, project reports, field notebooks, oral presentations and exams. And it won't just be limited to those either. That is just a couple of examples for you. And through those assessment methods is just a few um, examples of those transferable skills that I keep mentioning that you could gain. So you've got things like initiative and teamwork, professional outlook, you'll get data analysis skills that you might not have already, problem solving, resilience. And I think the biggest one for me coming from my student journey is time management. Now, studying on a geology degree or a geography and geology degree, you might have an opportunity to go on quite a few field trips. So you're trying to juggle those field trips alongside your other modules and having a part time job, family life and things like that. It can be really difficult. And although I studied biology, I did go on quite a lot of field trips. So I have experienced that for myself. And that was something that I found really difficult at the beginning of university. But over the three years that I was studying, I actually developed my time management skills quite a lot and I'm actually really quite good at it now and um, so that's just one personal experience that stands out to me um, but you will gain all of these skills plus a lot more as well the rate again that is just a few examples and some careers that you might have the opportunity to go into and um, now I've got all of these careers from a website called prospects.ac.uk and that is a really good website if you want to have a look at different career options after you've studied on a degree or if you're not quite sure what degree you want to study, you can also go on and have a look at that and it will tell you a little bit of information about what kind of things you'll be studying. And then again, some career paths after that. So I won't tell you what all of these are, but if you do have any questions, please do feel free to send them through to John and he will forward them on and I will get back to you on that. Now, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the statistics, because for me, it was really important that I knew that when I came out of my degree, after I'd studied for those three years and put all my effort into it, that I was going to have somewhere to go and something to do that I would enjoy. So looking at the physical and geographical sciences employability, you can see there that there's 44.2% of people that have graduated from these courses working full time in the UK. 10.5% of them are working part-time in the UK. You've got a small percentage working overseas, some that are working and studying, and you can see 26.1% there are in further study. And when we look at geology specifically, you can see that 46.5% are employed and 37.1% are in further study. So those statistics are quite high 
Um, so that is always a good thing to look out for. And like I mentioned, for me, it was really important that I knew that there was going to be a read all this out to you, but you can see such a wide range of occupations that I think people have gone into. And um, so everything from arts, design and media down to management level jobs, health professionals, there's lots and lots of different opportunities to you. So I'm sure if you enjoy geology and you want to go and study that, there will be a job out there for you that you will enjoy. And as well, not just studying geology, but being a student in general at university or in higher education, there are those extra student opportunities that you'll get to take part in as well. So there'll be scholarships and bursaries that are available to you. So every university will have different scholarships and bursaries with different criteria. So any university that you're looking at applying to, I definitely recommend having a look on their websites and having a look at what would be available to you. You've got extracurricular activities you can get involved with, so things like societies and sports and lots and lots of different opportunities when it comes to extracurricular things. You could possibly go on a placement year or semester if you wanted to. You'll have loads of opportunity to network with people in industry. Again, that could help you get your placements if you wanted to do something like that. Learning a language, so you can do that at Edge Hill as part of your degree, or you can do that within a society as an extra curricular activity. You'll gain lots and lots of field and lab skills and you'll get training on industry stranded equipment as well. So just a few final things from me before I go. So have a think about what courses interest you. So explore what's out there. There might be something that suits your interests exactly. Have a look at what universities offer them. So if it's something quite niche that you want to study, for example, our geoenvironmental hazards course, you might not have a lot of choices when it comes to what universities will offer them. And always bear in mind as well, just because it's the same name or a very similar name, it might not be the same course. Again, using our courses as an example. So our geology with geography is 75 and 25% split, whereas geography and geology is 50%. So they're very similar in name, but they are very different courses. What kind of universities do you want to go to? So do you want to go to a collegiate university or a campus university or a city-based university? And whereabouts would you like that to be based? Do you want to be close to home or further away from home? Obviously, that will differ uh, person to person. What UCAS points or specific grades are required? So check what's needed of you, including your previous qualifications. So for example, your GCSEs. What work experience do you need? So some courses might require some previous work experience, but as I said before, please do bear in mind that part-time work, part-time jobs are absolutely great for experience and you will gain lots and lots of skills that you can apply to a university degree or higher education. And finally, what are the graduate employability rates? So have a look at the likelihood of jobs being available in sectors that you would enjoy working in. So thank you so much for listening to me put on about geology. I really hope that was useful.